Hey everybody, this is Aaron from Aaron's Audio Corner and today I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to do an unboxing and then we're going to walk through some of the features of a speaker I've recently gotten in for review. As you can see next to me is the beautiful and illustrious Kef R3 in a wonderful, in my opinion, gloss black finish. I'm currently in the middle of possibly changing up my measurement setup. I don't know for sure if I'm going to do it. I am waiting for final pricing. And since I'm in between right now, somewhat in limbo, I thought, hey, why not take the opportunity, do a little quick video about this speaker, talk about it, and that'll give you guys something to kind of hold you over until I'm able to start doing some testing again of loudspeakers, which could be a couple weeks or it could be a month or two. I don't know yet, but keep an eye out for some information uh, in that regard. I'll, I'll make a video if things go the way that I'm really hoping they'll go for my measurement future. But in the meantime, yeah, let's, uh, let's take a look at this. So first off, we're gonna kick things off with a unboxing video. Then we're gonna come right back and talk about the speaker, the looks, some of the features, and that'll be it for the day. All right, here we are with the Kef R3 packaging. And I've already cut the top slot. Just make life a little bit easier and make this go quicker. This is the brochure. And the instruction manual, which surely will tell me everything I need to know about this speaker. Then you have this big old top layer of styrofoam type material. It's got these two holes in it where the port bungs are placed. So these port bungs are just used to seal off the ports of the enclosures. That way, if you wanted to place them near a wall and not suffer adverse effects from doing so via the ports, you could do that. You just plug the ports up with these little suckers, the little foam pieces. Then we've got the grills. And now I gotta figure out where a good place to grab a hold of these speakers is that fills Now we are cooking a beautiful gloss black finish. And on the bottom are, look like threaded inserts, probably for a stand if you wanted to secure these to a stand. And wow, these are really quite nice. I probably should be wearing some white gloves here, but I'm not. And that's that. Grab it by that rear port. Spin it around here. Oh yeah. Now you guys can see what I'm looking at. Ooh. Man, I tell you what. Now I owned a pair of Kef R500s. I believe they were, I don't know, five or six years back when I first moved into this home. And um, if you follow me, if you follow my car audio installs, you know that I've also used the concentric driver from that Kef R500 in my car audio system. And that cone of that concentric driver, the phase plug and everything about it was silver. This black looks awesome. I love this black on black. Kind of has like a, a, a stealthy Star Wars appeal to it. I just think this is gorgeous. All right, now that you saw that titillating opening of the box, for those of you who are into that sort of thing, Let's talk about the speaker itself. Now, personally, the thing that jumps out to me when I opened up the box was just the black on black nature of this speaker. Now, in the past, I've tested other speakers that I've loved. So far, I haven't really tested any speakers that I haven't thought were really nice finish, other than maybe some budget ones. But I even tested the Klipsch Heresy 4 recently, and I thought that had a really nice retro look and feel to it. And it was the total opposite of this speaker. So it couldn't be the furthest thing from this nice gloss black finish, but I still liked it. So aesthetically speaking, wonderful looking speaker to me. The one thing that I noticed initially was the black cones. And if you follow me, if you've seen my car audio reviews or even my older drive unit reviews, you might've seen that I did a review of the Kef, I think it's the R100, R500, 700, and 900 uh, mid-range concentric driver. And that was just a phenomenal drive unit in itself. 
I used it in my car. The silver cone on it kind of stood out like a sore thumb. So when I'm seeing this black finish, the black finish cone, to me, it's like, that's awesome. As far as specs goes, what this speaker has for it is a six and a half inch mid bass driver and then a five inch mid range coaxial or really concentric because the voice coils are aligned between the tweeter and the mid range. And the tweeter itself is a one inch aluminum dome tweeter with Kef's tangerine waveguide to help even out the high frequency dispersion of the tweeter itself. Now, some things that I like about this speaker, the trim ring around the mid woofer really helps to provide that inset look to the speaker and also helps with diffraction around the woofer itself as it mates to the cabinet. Another thing that's really fancy about this speaker and quite a bit different from the R300, 500, et cetera series is this large shadow flare uh, plastic insert. And what this does is it mates to the profile of the mid range because you've got to remember that since this speaker is a concentric, the mid range of this drive unit acts as a waveguide to the tweeter itself. And what you want to do is you don't want to have the waveguiding stop abruptly where the mid range meets the cabinet baffle. You want that waveguide to continue on. And if you were able to take, which a picture is not really going to do it justice and me turning this sideways around won't do it justice. But if you were able to see this in person, what you would see is that this shadow flare design provides the same profile as the mid range cone itself and it just continues it on to the baffle. So you've got a very smooth transition as you go, not just from the tweeter to the mid range, but from the mid range to the baffle. The corners are slightly rounded over, but not much. It's mostly just a, a square baffle on the front. We're gonna spin it around to the side where you can see my sticky fingerprints on it. As you can see, there is a multi-way binding post on the rear. And according to the specs, this can be single wired or bi wired or bi amplified. And you do that simply by, if you want to single wire it, then you just have these little knobs right here in the middle and you turn them clockwise until they're all the way in. And then you just plug in your single amplifier terminal outputs to one of these uh, pair of leads. And if you want to bi wire or bi amplify them, what you do is you just turn these little links counterclockwise until they are all the way out. And that will allow you to run individual amplifier channels. So if you've got four channels of amplification, then you can run one channel to the high frequency, mid frequency, and one channel to the low frequency for each speaker. Now, what's the benefit of doing that? I don't know. Do I believe you should do that? I don't know. Uh, some people say that there's a benefit. Some people say that there's not. Personally, I've not run into a case where I feel like there is demonstrably, demonstrably, I don't know, you know what I mean, uh, a, a significant benefit to doing that. So I'll leave that up to you if you want to do that or not. Then we've got the flare port on the backside. And then with the supplied port bung, you can just simply seal this woofer off by doing that. There you go. Magic. And you would do that again if you were going to place them near a wall. Um, you wouldn't want the port being stuck right next to a wall because it wouldn't allow the air to come out and, and vent properly. To be honest with you, what I really want to do I want to take the speaker apart. I want to test the mid bass drive unit on its own just to see what the parameters are like and uh, what the performance is like for the mid bass woofer itself. But I really, really want to see what the performance is like for this uh, concentric speaker itself as well. But this is brand new. They were just delivered. So if I decide to get gutsy and disassemble this thing and test them in that way, I will certainly let you guys know, but for now, I'm gonna leave it bone stock as is. But yeah, I really wanna see the performance of, of this concentric driver. Personally, I'm really excited to test the speaker. Uh, like every speaker, you know, I try to go into it with an open mind, but having owned the R500 speaker before, which was the tower version with dual, I think five and a quarter inch mid bass drive units, I do have some lineage to KEF speakers. I've also tested some of their raw drivers, the LS50 raw driver and then the raw driver out of the R500. And I don't know, I'm just, I'm pretty geeked about, about testing this one out and listening to it because there were certain things that I heard about those speakers that I've still yet to hear another speaker do as well. And namely in regards to the spatial reproduction of a sound stage, they just really gave a very great 3D sense. It didn't feel like the stage, you know, started at one point and was all forward from there. It sounded like it was 
uh, oval shaped, I guess for a lack of better words. But I'll get into more of that information in my subsequent subjective and objective testing and see how I can maybe try to correlate that information now that I've got a better understanding of the acoustics and how things work in general speaker design because that was six or so years ago. That's gonna do it for me today. If you guys want, make sure you hit the subscribe button, make sure you, well, you don't have to like the post, but subscribe and hit the notifications bell. That way you'll be updated when I do finally publish the actual data and the subjective thoughts. I hope you guys have a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, wonderful time with your family and friends. Stay safe out there and I'll talk to y'all soon. Peace.